All right, guys, back from the summer bash and uh, had a had a great time down there, and I thoroughly got my uh, my you know what handed to me by Adam on the four jaw competition. Um, <laughs> this was my uh, this was my prize here. <laughs> from Mr. Brad Jacobs of uh, Basement Shop Guy. Uh, so everybody wins, right? Well, as some of you may know, I, uh, um, I was pretty sure that I wasn't gonna win, so uh, I needed some kind of a competitive advantage. So uh, we uh, introduced this, uh, this Chuck key, uh, which was carefully engineered to, uh, to fail at just the right moment uh, for Adam. Um, you know, this is all in good fun, and uh, this is practical joking, and uh, and you know what? It's entertainment for you guys, okay? So, uh, and it's fun for me, too. So, anyway, uh, I have some video of uh, me making this thing, but what I thought I would do is is go through the whole joke here and, um, and kind of lay it out for you, the depths of my... Uh, <laughs> Uh, my deviousness, and um, you guys can see for yourself. Um, don't mess with old guys, right? Okay. Now, Dale Derry from uh, Metal Tips and Tricks is is trying to fan this into some com paparazzi uh, uh, conspiracy. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. So uh, this is the true source. Uh, get your information here, and don't listen to Dale. Um, so anyway, uh, real quickly. Uh, this is a little test rig. I'm going to show you all this uh, much closer here. This is a little test rig for determining the breakaway torque. Uh, this is the actual chuck key. This is the box that it was delivered in. And then there was even a little, uh, 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 even a little phony letter uh, to Adam. So uh, let's look at these things in detail. And uh, then we'll see a little bit of the, uh, the fabrication of this and, uh, and have a little fun. All right, let's, let's start with this thing here. What this is, um, let me just take it apart and show you. This this was used to determine um, the right breakaway torque. Okay, and um, so the way this thing works internally is it has a, a couple of shear pins. Okay, so as you try to rotate these in relation to one another, it it clips it shears a pin off. Okay, now. You know, you can calculate these things, okay? You can calculate them uh, mathematically uh, from the yield strength and radius and th those kinds of things. But what I was looking for was a very, very specific feel on the chuck wrench. When you, when you tightened it up to a particular point, it was just going to let go, okay? So what's going on here is this is me trying to determine what that, uh, what that radius was, okay? So we're pivoting about this center here. Um, and so the farther the shear pins are from the center, the more uh, handle torque it's going to take to um, uh, to actually shear the pins. And also the the material of the pin um, has an effect on this too. So the stronger um, the material, uh, the tougher it is to shear. Now this is steel, this is brass, and then this is aluminum here. These are some of the materials that I tested. Um, so anyway, so this is the little test rig here, and it's just two plates. Uh, I ground them a little bit so that they, they ran together real nice, and then they have a, uh, a center pivot here, like so. All right, to hold those two faces together so they stay together nicely, okay? All right, and then the pin, these holes register. Let's see if I can get it through there like so, okay? You can see it coming through, all right? Now, I actually pretty quickly ended up, so there was a, you know, there's some design considerations here which are kind of interesting. You know, this thing, you know, I couldn't make this infinitely large, right? Uh, so it had to be of a certain size. So my pin, the radius of my pins location had to be fairly small, right? So that's where I ended up with these, uh, uh, at these particular holes here. That's what's in this one here. All right. I'll, I'll show you the drawing in a second too. Uh, you know, I'll be working this all out on uh, on paper too. Um, so there was that, and uh, and I got a little video clip of me testing this, and which is kind of cool. You get you guys will see that in a minute. Uh, I'll str I'll string all this stuff together so you can see it. All right. Um, so let's uh, 
I'll reset the camera and then I'll take this apart and uh, you can see how this comes apart and then uh, the guts of this guy, which is pretty cool. Alright, so first off you see there's a fastener here and that fastener threads into this. So let's go ahead and we'll take that out of there. Okay, it's got a uh, cross hole there and then this little cap comes out like so, okay, and then that exposes the uh, the hollow down the uh, down the middle of this thing. Now, right now it's it's <laughs> it's declutched. The pins have been sheared, so let's uh, reach down there. Now, and you know it's very similar to this. It's got a a fastener down the down the center that kind of holds the two halves together. We'll see that in a sec. Wind, the, wind this thing out, and I, you'll see this in a sec. Uh, it's kind of weird looking, but uh, it just made it so it was easier to assemble. So, you know, I run this all the way down until it bottoms out, and then um, there's no, there's, there's no axial play this way. Um, see, there's there's the pins sheared off there. <laughs> now these are brass. Uh, brass turns out it shears really nicely. Um, it doesn't yield when you start to turn it. It just breaks really suddenly. So there's a real crisp snap uh, when you when it shears off. So then I I put a little groove here to make these easier to get out because I figured that once the once the cat was out of the bag, uh, uh, people would want to play around with it and try it. Now look at that. So if you ever want to make a uh, a rod parter, you know, for shearing off rods. Look at look at that clean cut right there. It's just bleep, you know, it's just really, really crisp. So there's the pinholes. There's down. Oh, gotta poke those out too. So get a little poker here. All right. So there's the leftover pins there, and you can kind of see down in there. And you can see in there. So there's a little wall in here that's got a matching set of holes. Um, and, uh, and this goes together like this. Okay. This is 17.4 uh, stainless, uh, H900 actually. So this is hard. This, would ha this is actually a really good chuck key. If you put good pins in it, um, it would be an, an awesome chuck key, which is probably what I'll end up doing. Um, this is. Um, 954 aluminum bronze, so it's a hard bronze. Um, and as you can see, I hope down there, after shearing off a few pins, it still looks, you know, the edges of the, the holes are still uh, kind of nice. So, anyway, there's that. Um, and um, all right, so let's. Uh, and this fits kind of kind of close, okay? Then I added some flutes and uh, and whatnot. So let's. Uh, there's the mechanics of the thing, okay? The guts of the thing. Let's talk about the uh, the setup, actually. How to how to reel an atom fish in. Okay, so the next part of the uh, of the setup is is the box and uh, and the letter, right? So, you know, my story to Adam is, uh, you know, right at the last minute, right before the the competition, I said, oh oh oh, I almost forgot um, a viewer sent in a box, um, he made something for you, okay? And he sent it to me because I had to, I had to quote unquote check this on the, uh, on the, uh, the four jaw machine, uh, the Kingmaker machine, which is, you guys saw the videos for that. So that was the kind of the, the setup. So I pulled it out of the box, I showed Adam the Chuck key, and then to go with that, I had a, a phony letter here, okay? And this is complete, and utter fabrication here, da down to the the town and the name, the guy's name. Okay, so uh, in fact, I very very carefully uh, had a couple of misspellings in here: A B O N seventy nine, and then um, I even spelled my own uh, my own name wrong down in the bottom somewhere here. And um, complete fake city. Um, in Montana and Fake Street. This is my old street address uh, uh, where I used to live a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and the guy's name is a 
mishmash of uh, uh, some folks that I've worked with over the years. So <laughs> utter utter fabrication. And then the box, you know, I needed a box. So here's a label. It's a, a priority mail shipping label. And oh, whoops, the uh, the return address accidentally got peeled off. You know, no big deal. None of this is enough to raise alarms uh, in itself, right? And uh, that was kind of the general idea there. So uh, you're gonna have to watch the video to hear me read this letter uh, on camera. Um, and then, you know, Adam's even holding this up and thanking Mr. Uh, Mr. Tim here uh, uh, for the really cool pro the real cool gift. So uh, that was the, uh, the setup there. So anyway, um, I'm gonna put this back together with some proper pins in it. And then uh, in, there's a couple little video clips coming after this uh, showing uh, some of the fabrication of this. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Um, please subscribe and um, it helps us. Uh, like, comment, share, uh, do, do your part and, uh, and help out us YouTube creators. Thanks guys. Kind of looks like a four jaw chuck handle key, but it's extra special. Oh, oops. Uh oh. Problem.
did.
Oops. Hey, just remember, don't mess with old guys. <laughs>